I use this big picture approach that I first picked up from the East Germans. Of course, that's a long time ago. Just saying East Germans that sets us back into the to the 80s. Actually, in my case, I think I learned about this in the 70s. And it's this idea of building an athlete and building a year. And I just always loved the way it was explained. The three words are accumulation, intensification, transformation. And you'll notice that I have programs called transformation programs. So I think one of the mistakes we a lot of people make is they don't accumulate anymore. They, they get a program, they buy a book, and that's it. This is the program I'm going to do. And I'm not ripping on anybody, but let's just say it's Marty Gallagher's program. So twice a year, I'm going to do 12 weeks of squat, deadlift, bench press. Well, that's great. Marty's programs are phenomenal. But don't forget, Marty came from an Olympic lifting background. And I sure, I'm sure and I know that Marty knows a whole bunch about bodybuilding stuff. But when you read his programs, you're reading that narrow focused at the next two levels. So when you first get involved in our field of fitness, strength and conditioning, whatever you want to call it this week, the fitness industry, you know, you might learn all about machines and that there's nothing wrong with machines. And then maybe you f should flitter over to calisthenics for a while. Then maybe you should learn gymnastics, then the Olympic lifts and the power lifts, and then this exercise in the kettlebell world and the suspension training world and this and this. You want to accumulate as much knowledge and physical knowledge. It's not just intellectual here. <clears throat> it's that movement family you need to master. Once you figure out from there what works for you or, in my case, where we're heading with our goal set, then we're going to up a few of those numbers. So in, if you want to be a better discus thrower, well, you're going to have to throw the discus and maybe do one or two other fun things. and then But then you have to snatch and clean and jerk or snatch and clean, depending what kind of program you're doing. And as you get stronger and stronger and stronger, and those two, two, three, four lifts and the throwing, pretty soon those other fun things that you're doing have to drop off too. Because now you're transforming into an elite thrower. Now, the mistake I often make, I wish I had one more word to share, but I use the word transform in two different ways in this model. The first is to transform you into, well, what the goal we settled on, uh, elite discus thrower, 7% body fat, 6% body fat, whatever it is. And I also use the word transform one other way. Once you get to that place, once you get, you got your goal, you breathe out, everybody hugs you, you have the big party, you get the trophy, you, you get the picture. Then <clears throat> we need to transform you back into accumulation again. So transformation is a big kind of flip. We're going, we're getting more and more and more and more specific. And then this turn happens and we slide back down to accumulation again. Um, I had a question the other day about absolute specificity, and I thought very few people can make specificity work. In fact, I don't know if I've ever made it. The, the, the joke I used not long ago with Pat Flynn was somebody at one time told me that to throw the disc as far, I should do uh, this dumbbell fly exercise. That is as stupid as anything I've ever heard in my life, because as you go across the ring, you don't suddenly peck fly the discus out there. It's a, it's like a rubber band. It's a stretch reflex. It's like a bow and arrow. All your chest does is snap like that. You don't throw it. You don't throw it. You become this massive rubber band that snaps the implement in the sector. This person thought there was sports specificity and they picked the worst example you could possibly think of. I get this all the time. I do a one-legged sport, so I just do one-legged lifts. Well, um, well, maybe on the other, I mean, if you're a long jumper going off your left leg, you know, long term, you probably want to balance that right leg off. But asymmetry is part of the price you pay for elite performance. Uh, you're not going to be, I, I've been around a lot of elite athletes and a lot of, you know, high-end military and collision occupation people. Uh, n normal is the farthest thing they are. Okay. Normal's over there somewhere. This is where we are. So one of the things I'd like you to think about as you move through your, your fitness knowledge, 
I think it's really important you, you, you read up on all kinds of different opposing nutritional points of view. The carnivore diet versus vegan. I think you'll learn m much from both. Um, there's a book that says you should work for two hours, sleep for one. And of course, most of us think you should just get a good night's sleep, eight or nine hours. I think it really helps to have those conflicting concepts in your head. You should learn power lifts. You should learn Olympic lifts. You should learn hard style kettlebell, but you should learn the sport of kettlebells too. Different techniques there. Because you want to accumulate as much knowledge, mental, physical, and every other old you can think of, and slowly intensify it by the things that work for you. And then transform for a bit, and then slide back down and repeat it. We call this the AIT, uh, accumulate, intensify, and transform. When my brothers were young, getting ready to go off to Vietnam, we had AIT, it was called Advanced Infantry Training. Not the same thing. I hope that helps. Thanks so much.